Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here. So we just finished learning all about projectiles in our asteroid game where we had asteroids coming in as projectiles off the side of the screen. And then we had the little lasers the player was shooting at as projectiles coming from a sprite. Every time I teach my students how to make projectiles and I give them the freedom to build their own projectile games, I always have at least a few students who are trying to build a game where the player can shoot in different directions, and they frequently struggle with this. So today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do just that. Here's a little secret. Everything you need to do this has been inside you all along. In your brain. Because there's no new skills needed for this. I'm not gonna teach you anything in this video that you don't already know if you've been going through our course. So. Let's get started. All right. First things first, I'm going to make myself a character real quick here. We're not going to spend any time on making it look fancy. Of course, when you do yours, I would encourage you to make your character look as fancy as you want. So I'm making a character. I'm giving him some movement controls. I'm also going to throw a background color. I'm going kind of fast in this video because, as I mentioned, I've already taught you guys all these skills in previous videos. If you are new to this channel, I would encourage you to go check out the playlist where you can see all of these lessons in order. All right, so I've got a character that now moves around with my arrow keys. I want to give this character projectiles so that he can shoot, but I want him to be able to shoot in whatever direction he is facing, rather than just one way like we did with the asteroid game. So before I get to all that, let's actually have him facing different directions. How can I get the player to face different directions as he walks around? I want you to think about the clicking game that we made, the little clicker game. Remember how when you press the button, the image changed, and then when you let go of the button, it changed back? We did that with a simple block that changes images. We're going to use the same thing here. So what I want to do is I'm going to create four blocks for up, down, left, and right. Up, down, left and right. And then I'm going to put blocks in here that change the appearance of the sprite depending on which way you're walking. So in the sprite section, to change the picture, we go all the way down here to the bottom to the one that says set my sprite image. Again, none of this is new if you've taken this course. So when, you press, when I press up, I want my sprite to be facing up. In the gallery, there's already an image for that, so it's facing away from the player. When I press down, I want him to be facing down. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time he's gonna be facing towards the player. When I press left, I want him to be facing in the left direction, which looks like he's doing right here. And when I press right, I want him facing in the right direction. which I can do right here. Okay, so what I have right now, if I walk around the screen, he should at least be facing the direction that I'm walking. Pretty decent. Now, obviously he's not actually walking. I don't have animation in here. And the reason I don't have animation in here is because I haven't taught you guys animation yet. But trust me, it is coming. All right, so we have him facing up, down, left and right. He's facing the direction that he's walking and that is just great. So now that we have him facing the right way, I wanna give him projectiles, but I want them to shoot in the direction that he's facing. So let's go ahead and get started with that. To do the projectiles, I'm gonna need the A button press because that's what we're gonna to press to shoot the projectiles. And then I'm going to use the projectile block which we learned about down here. Remember, there are two projectile blocks. Which one of these two is the one we're going to use to have the player shoot? Look at those two blocks. It should be the one that comes from a sprite because we have it coming from the player. Now, I never renamed my player. He's just called my sprite for now. I could rename him if I wanted to, but at this point in time, it's not super important to me. So I'm going to have him shoot. Once again, I'm just going to use a pre-made image here. Um, I will have him shoot this little laser ball right there. Okay. So right now, when I play my game, he can walk in four directions, and when I press the A button, he fires in that direction. 
no matter which way I'm shooting, I'm sorry, no matter which way I'm facing, he always shoots in that direction. Why is he shooting in that direction? Look at the projectile block that I just gave him. What part of that block decides the direction that he's shooting? Hopefully you know this if you did the, the last lesson, lesson six. The part that chooses the direction is the VX and the VY. We talked about this when we were creating our asteroids. So VX tells us what speed in the X direction. VY tells us the speed in the Y direction. So right now it's moving 50 pixels per second in the positive X direction, which means to the right. And it's moving 50 pixels per second in the positive Y direction, which would be down. So it's moving in both these directions at the same time, and that creates that diagonal that we just saw, right? So for this game, we want it to shoot in the direction that you're facing. So we actually need the VX and the VY to change as we're playing this game. Hmm. We want them to change. Early on in this series, there was a something I taught you guys that I said means change what is something in coding that we use when we want something to change look at the toolbox over there what in this toolbox represents change do you remember i know it was a few lessons back it was near the beginning of the series the thing i'm thinking about is variables remember how we talked about we watched that we watched that video we talked about how when something changes, it means it has a variable. It means it is a variable. Variables are things that change. So if we want VX and VY to change, depending on which way the player is facing, we need those to be variables. So we're going to create two variables. Now, what you decide to name them is really up to you. But when you name variables, it's a good idea to name them based on how you're using them. So I'm going to name one X direction. I'm just gonna call it XDIR. And I'm gonna name the second one YDIR for Y direction. So this will help me keep track of my X direction and my Y direction. I'm gonna put them inside of my VX and my VY. So the VX speed, it will now be based on the X direction variable. The VY speed will now be based on the Y direction variable. All right, so now I can have these numbers change in game. When do I want my X direction and my Y direction to change? Well, we want them to change when I change directions, when I'm looking a different direction. So when in the code do I look a different direction? It's going to be right here in my button presses, right? So now I need to figure out what I need these variables to be. So when I press up, I need the bullets to shoot up. So when I'm facing up, they need to be shooting up. So I'm going to set my X direction to what? If I want them shooting straight up, what should I set my X direction to? Remember, X direction decides the speed in the X direction, left or right. If I'm shooting straight up, I shouldn't be moving left or right at all. So what should my X DIR, my X direction variable be set to? If I don't want it moving left or right at all, I need to leave it at zero. Make sense? So now I'm gonna do my Y direction. So my X direction is gonna be zero, Y direction. I need it shooting straight up. So Y decides up and down, right? What's the difference between up and down when we're talking about the Y? We're talking about positive and negative. Remember positive Y is down, negative y is up. So my y direction here needs to be a negative number. Now what number I put really has to do with how fast I want it to shoot. For now, I'm going to stick to 50 because that's what we were using before. So if I want to shoot up, I'm going to give it a negative number and I'm just going to make it negative 50. You decide what speed you want to use. Maybe you want to do negative 100. Maybe you want to do something else. The bigger the number, the faster the pellet will shoot, right? So I've got negative 50. So it shoots straight up. Okay, now for my down, I'm gonna do something very similar. Since I'm moving down, I'm not moving left or right, so the X direction will still be zero. What should my Y direction be for when I'm facing down? 
hopefully this isn't challenging. Hopefully you're getting where I'm going with this, right? If negative 50 is up, down should be positive 50. How are you guys feeling so far? Let's test it out before we move on to the next bit. Let's just make sure it works. So if I point up and I shoot, it shoots up. If I point down and I shoot, it shoots down. I'm doing pretty good. I still need my left and right. So left, what should my X direction be for left? So remember X has to do with left and right. Which one's positive and which one's negative? Left would be negative, right would be positive. So if I'm looking left, I need a negative number. We're just gonna stick to 50. It doesn't make sense to change it in different directions, right? So whatever number you use, it should be the same on all of them, just different positives or negatives, right? So if you decide to go with 100, they should all be 100s. If you decide to go with 75, they should all be 75. Just make sure you're changing the positive and the negative for the direction. Now, since we're only shooting left and we're not shooting up and down, what does the Y need to be? The Y, since we're not moving up and down at all, should be zero. I hope you got that. All right, now for right, we're gonna do similar stuff. For right, the X direction should be what? Should be positive 50, right? And then the Y direction, since it's just moving right and it's not moving up or down, should be zero. So if I did this correctly, I now can shoot in all four directions. And there we go. There we go. We have a working game or we can now shoot in four directions. Now, why might you want to make a game like that? Well, that's completely up to you. There's a lot you can do with this. Maybe you have enemies that randomly spawn on the screen. Um, maybe you have a bunch of en enemies. Maybe you want to do something like a zombie game where you're surrounded by enemies on all sides. Let's see if I can make one real quick here. So remember on our asteroid game, we created it by having them spawn every so often. So let's do the same sort of thing. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna create them as projectiles originally. That way I can spawn them from the side of the screen. That'll make it easier for me. And I'm gonna rename them just to keep my code from getting too messy. I'm gonna rename them zombie. And let's make them look like, there aren't really any zombie characters in this game. Um, yeah, nothing really zombie-like. Let's just go with the ghost. We'll pretend that the ghost is a zombie for now. All right, so I want him to come from all sides of the screen. So remember, when we were playing around with the asteroids, the numbers you set here decide the direction that they're coming from. So if this was a negative number, the zombies will now come from a different direction. There they are. If this was a negative number, They would come from a different part of the screen. Yep. So these numbers are really deciding the speed of the zombies, but also where they're coming from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace both of those numbers with a random. Once again, there's nothing new in this video. This is all stuff we have done before. I'm just using it in a slightly different way. So I'm going to use a random for my VX and my VY for my new ghost. Oh, that's supposed to be a zombie. And what I need to do is I need to set a positive and a negative number. That way it's coming from all the directions, right? So let's do negative. How fast do I want these guys to move? Right now they're moving about 10. That's actually not bad. Let's do negative 10 to positive 10. That's pretty zombie-like. So now they should be coming from all directions. Yeah, that's not bad. And I can make more of them appear by just making this happen more frequently, right? So if we're doing it every 200 milliseconds, that means there's a new zombie being created. Uh, there's basically five per second that are being created now. That's a lot of them. So if I want to make my shooter game, I could do, then do something from here, right? Now, of course, I would still need to create my overlap code for what to do when the pellet hits the zombie and I would have to create an overlap code for what to do when the zombie hits me. And I feel like you guys know enough by now that hopefully you can do that without my help. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this game now and encourage you to build a four-way shooting game and decide what do you want to happen? 
maybe you don't want them just aiming wondrously. Maybe you want to turn this into a chasing game. What's that? A chasing game and a projectile game in one? Whoa! This is the most chaotic thing since Taco Bell Pizza Huts. All right. Where is the chasing block? Right there. So maybe you want the zombies to chase after the player. That would make it even crazier. Ah! Oh, I forgot to change the speed. That's way too fast. But you see where I'm going with this, right? Rather than aiming wanders, wandering aimlessly. Did I say aiming wondrously? I think I did. Instead of wandering aimlessly, you could have them follow you. Okay, that's actually a little bit too crazy. I don't like that. I like the wandering aimlessly better. Anyways, have fun with it, guys. Build yourself a cool game. And, of course, share it with me. I want to see what you make, right? Put the link in the comments. Hit this button. Share your project. Copy the link. Put it in the comments. And play each other's games. Have fun with that, too. Remember, here on my YouTube channel, we only share positive feedback. So if you're commenting on someone else's game, make sure you're doing so nicely. If you learned something new today, click the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in future videos. Hope you had fun. Bye.